Here we go, it's last week at the auction, America's favorite top 10 list of auction results from around the globe. As hand selected by me, Josh Levine, your host and guide to the world of auctions, this is episode one of season three and continues to be the hottest YouTube series and social media sensation in the world. Okay, it's the auction world and what's on tap for today? How about some ugly chairs? Or the devil's pitcher? And just what do you get for five bucks and I got so many pens and so little time. Hey, I'm sorry for the tease, but I'm just so excited to be back. The following episode contains real auction results from real auction houses, and with that comes, I think, valuable insight to what's going on in the secondary market. You know, whether you're a reseller, an appraiser, an auctioneer, downsizing the state, thinking of selling a collection, or maybe you just like antiques and collectibles, we're all gonna learn something with each and every episode. And before I get started, I wanna wish a warm welcome back to my subscribers and say hello to you newbies, cause we got the goods. Amazing auction results, fun facts, and so much more. What do I always say? Nothing is more interesting than the world of auctions. Not even reruns of the Gilmore Girls, I'm serious. You know, and I wanna know what Rory's gonna name the baby. Anyway, before you go, if you like the show, subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment or two, and please share, cause sharing is caring. And don't forget to check down the drop down section below, cause I have all the links to everything I discuss, social media channels, and most importantly, where you can find out more about all these great auctions auction houses because they're where I find out about all this cool stuff. So let's get on with it. It's last week at the auction. Coming in at number 10 is this Royal Bay Ruth Devil Water Pitcher that just brought $350 at Woody's. It was only seven and a half inches tall but commanded top dollar. You know, known for their vintage novelty wares, Royal Bay Ruth hard paste porcelains have always been highly collected. Founded in Germany in 1794, they're still in business. I find the whimsical figurals of the latter 19th and early 20th century have the biggest following. So be on the lookout, they are out there and they can be a great score. Number nine is a set of TNV Limoges oyster plates that hammered for 550 bucks at A-Bells in LA. The Victorian period introduced several quite specialized service pieces that have never been seen before till this time. Perhaps none are as decadent as the oyster plate. If you wanted to impress the most affluent guests in the late 19th century, the service of these shellfish delicacies presented on these porcelain masterpieces was the way to do it. Their allure to the serious collector still remains to this day. Some of the more delicate and intricate have fetched thousands. All right, number eight is the Michelle Pershin blue and gold fountain pen set that brought $1,100 at toys, trains, and other old stuff. It was part of a wonderful collection and Willie knocked it out of the park. This auction showed what auctions can do for you and there is quite the pen collector subculture. You know, keep your eyes peeled for vintage fountain pens. These might be the most often overlooked missed collectible when handling an estate. So check out those junk drawers. There's pens in there. Number seven is two modern upholstered armchairs that just sold for 1500 bucks at Hindeman. And I don't know about you, but I think they're pretty ugly. And you know, there's several lessons and proverbs in this one. Beauty and therefore value is truly in the eye of the beholder or the checkbook or credit card holder. You know, I would have thought these were a hundred bucks on a good day and walked on by and not worth the hassle of loading them in the car, but I'd be wrong. $1,500 wrong. See, no one knows everything. Trends and tastes are constantly changing, so keep up. All right, number six is an 1899 $5 cheap silver certificate that brought 2,200 at one great deal auction. Now that's inflation. Old paper currency is hot. They're not printing any more of it, and heck, we might, not, we might be doing away with it soon, but I've been watching for several years and prices are always on the rise. It seems to make sense though, because it's paper, more perishable than coins, you know, your production runs in many cases were very limited, and further, many were destroyed or taken out of circulation years ago by the banks as they were replaced. Plus, can I just say the engraving that went into some of these is just simply beautiful. So, you have rarity, desirability, and therefore, you got money. What's next? Number five, four antique Sherman Denton trout prints sold for 2,700 bucks with our friends at Leland Little. And these turn of the century chromolithographs circa 1895 were from the Game Fish of New York set. Prints are often overlooked these days and I get it, but desirability and rare, rarity are still the key. Many of you know the original Audubon prints can command thousands of dollars, but there are so many under the radar prints like these that are highly prized. A quick search of sites like WorthPoint or historic auction results from live auctioneers is a great way to do a quick search 
for, for the value when you don't know. And trust me, there are thousands of them out there that you don't know. I don't know. Let's move on to number four, which is a Michel Ducaroy Togo Sofa, and that brought $3,000 also at Leland Little. And I know what you're thinking. Was that made from a Sharpay skin? Heavens no. But it does illustrate that mid-mod designer furniture is still all the rage. Looks comfortable, am I right? And it's a great follow-up to this one because number three is the Pedro Friedberg gilt wood hand chair that brought 7,500 bucks at Hindemann. Right out of an Austin Powers movie, this personifies the surrealist art furniture movement and it's what the famed Mexican artist is best known for. There are several variants out there and the fact is, you know, hey, if you see one under a thousand bucks in a state sale, buy it. Okay, this lot smoking. Number two is the Russian gold cigarette case and it crushed it, 18,000 bucks. It bore the mark of Fabergé and was approximately six ounces of gold. So for you scrappers out there doing the math, that's about $6,700 in gold. So see what knowing your marks here can do? It'll make you an extra $12,000, that's what it'll do. I just want to make that point because all too often I see the desire to cash out quick with gold and silver scores. Many pickers and yard sailors are just flipping their fines for a quick buck and I get it, but I bet you'd be really sick if you left a thousand, hey, ten thousand dollars on the table. So what's number one? This week it's the Qing Dynasty Hungwali Horseshoe Back Armchair. It had a pre-auction estimate of $1,500 to $2,500, but it brought $47,500 at Wilmington Gallery in Delaware. And I keep talking about Chinese, and it shows no sign of slowing down. That market is so hot. And from the estimate you can see, the predictability of prices in this market are out the window. I could do an entire episode on crazy Chinese auction prices. It's really the wild, wild west. But I'm not done. You know what? I'm so excited to be back that I'm throwing in a bonus crusher. A Rockwell Kent oil on canvas entitled Treetops and Mountain Peaks just sold for $280,000 at Catone. Art will always be the place where financial dreams can come true, but you have to know your art and artist. The best examples by the best artists command top dollar. Contrary to popular belief, it's not some oddball or off-topic genre by the artist. It's the known works. If an artist is known for landscapes, you don't want a portrait that he did for a friend, or a seascape by an artist known for pop art, and so on. If you don't know, consult an art expert. Useful sites, again, like WorthPoint, Askar, Artnet, etc. I have the links below, or just shoot me an email. And now you know what happened last week at the auction, and it's time for this week's viewer email. This week's question comes from Mark Forrester of Spokane, Washington, who asks, What's this WorthPoint app you keep talking about and sending out emails about? Great question. I've been singing their praises for a few months. WorthPoint is a one-stop shop for researching all your stuff. I think I heard they have over 500 million items and counting. And look, I know there's many sites out there that offer valuation services, but typically you'll find they only specialize in a, a certain genre and they're very expensive. Art, cars, coins, these sites are expensive, like I said, but worth point, you get everything, and I mean everything in one place. Hallmarks, signatures, price guides, I could ramble on, but I'd have to charge them for the commercial. Anyway, check out my Reseller Secrets blog post at joshlevinespeaks.com to find out more. Plus, I have links below to everything, how you get it. For you creative types, I also have a way you might be able to get that app for free. Shh, don't tell anybody. Anyway. Thank you for the question mark, and I hope that helps. Thanks again, everyone else. And don't forget to email me at josh at speaks, where you too can ask me any and all questions, because I have no life. And before I go, if you enjoyed the show, subscribe below. Please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and be sure to check out all the great auction houses from today's show and support your local auction houses. You know, they're some of the hardest working people in the business. And speaking of the business, uh, my new backing track you're listening to here is Whiplash by The Lucky Odds out of San Antonio, Texas. Check them out at theluckyodds.com. And remember to support your local musicians and artists. These are some of the hardest hit folks in the economy right now. So just do it. And I'll see you next week or last week at the auction. Man is giving me